the conclusion of Christ in that passage is strong. You cannot. Hey, this is the passage many pastors don't like to preach and many members don't want to hear. You don't want to hear it. You are either going to be serving mammon or God. We've got to get to the point in our walk with God where we decide who we want to believe. Mammon, by the way, is a spirit that governs money. So if you see people that are stealing pants on the wares of ladies, they are serving mammon. If you see yahoo, yahoo, the things they do, a man that will sleep with a cow, they are doing what serving mammon. Because the things they do tells you who they serve. And in marriages, Christian marriages, money is one of the major reasons and causes for divorce and separation. Money. Money matters. Money matters. Either you are not earning enough, or you are spending too much, or you can't meet my needs. Whatever it is, money matters. Number five. If it influences our decisions to part ways with people and make friends with others. Now this is one thing I told people that are close to me. I have never and I will never part ways with anybody in life because of money. Never. I will allow you to cheat me. But I won't say our friendship is no more because of money. A Christian will never do that. So allow yourself to be defrauded. Never part ways with people. They can part ways with you, but never. Oh, many people have cheated me. Many people have taken money from me. They won't pay. I don't mind. But I won't say, eh, because of that, I'll part ways. It tells us who you are. Money reveals character. Now, what the Bible says about money, I'll rush it quickly. Number one, Pastor P, Jesus called it mammon. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, Luke 16 verse 11. That's the spirit that controls money is called what? Mammon. Hence, our Lord called it master. Say, so you cannot have two masters. Two masters. Can you imagine? God called it master. Jesus called it master. You forget that word master is there. Hey, how many of you are servants to mammon? He calls it master. Because I'm coming to marriage now. Who are you serving? You cannot have two masters. For Christ to call mammon master shows there's a problem. Master. You can't even pay tithe. Master. Master. Jesus. I don't think you understand it. It's spiritual, Pedro. You cannot have two masters. I said, for the Lord to call him master because it had mastered many souls. It's important that the church teaches that Jesus taught and not allow intellectuals who are bereft of biblical truth to teach us about money. That's the first thing. Money is spiritual and it's called mammon. Number two, Paul said the love of money is the root of all. First, Corinthians, First Timothy 6 verse 10. The love of money is the root. Project it. The root of all evil. Root. Root. Every evil on earth. Go and check the root. You'll find love of money there. Most of the crimes committed in America are crimes of passion. A wife will kill husband because of money. A husband will kill wife because of money. It's the root. The word root is strong. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Love of money. Love of money. They've told us to stop preaching it. You can see how many people are flocking to places because of love of money. If I say in this church now, the next 10 days, we are doing money doubly miracle, the place will be full. Money doubly miracle. But you have to give me some. If I can double your own, they will come. And they, I don't know why they do I'm deceiving them. You'll be deceiving them. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. All evil. Check it. Begin to check all the evils around. You'll find somewhere hidden under there's a love of money. This is what the Bible says. Solomon says, in liking money to weapons of war to defend us. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. Solomon wasn't talking about money. He said, even money is bigger than weapons of war, money is bigger than wisdom. Sorry, wisdom is bigger than money. I beg your pardon. 7 verse 12. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. So, what does the Bible say about money? It's not just the love of money. For wisdom is what it defends. Money is also a defense. But the excellency or the supremacy or the advantage of wisdom is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. Money cannot. He just missed it. He just compared money and wisdom there. He didn't say money can give life. He said wisdom can give it. That's the edge wisdom has over. Do you get it now? 
Number four, Peter said, Thy money perish with you. So money can perish with people. Acts chapter 8, verse 20. Number five, the Pharisees are the ones that told us that there's something called corruption money. The modern day church have stopped preaching that. There's corruption money. Matthew 27, verse 6. The Pharisees say we should not bring corruption money into the church treasury. He says so. It is not lawful to put this money in the treasury. Which money? It's called blood money. Blood money, ritual killing. Rituals. People are going and kill, they now come to church. They want to launder. Now, this passage is what we call money laundering passage. This is money laundering. The chief priest took the silver pieces that he used to kill Jesus. And he said, it is not lawful, it is not right to put them into the treasury. Because it is what? It is what? These are people that are wicked though. If wicked people can even know that blood money is not going to church. Wicked people, they kill Jesus. Blood, blood money. I mean, have you it's saying bad? That is money laundering. Money laundering means that you do a bad business, you bring the money to church to launder your business. And I said, the blood of Jesus to wash your business. If I can put the money in the church, church will help me clean the money. Many years ago, I was traveling. Many, many years ago, one of those days I used to fly economy. I had a cousin who was, who was a year or two older than me, but three years older than me, a distant cousin. I was in economy. We met together at the airport. I think I was going to London. I, was, well, I think it was a UK flight to Lagos. Then he just came to meet me at the economy seat during the flight. He said, Yomi, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Look at you. I don't know why you are doing this. When will you grow up? Come to business with me. So I went to business class to sit down with him to enjoy the drink they used to take there. So as I was drinking, he pulled out cash, huge, like this bundle of pounds sterling, rolled. He said, can you see your money? This is money. You can make a lot. Please, I beg you. You are my cousin. We know some pastors are doing it. You refuse to do it. I said, what? I will do it all. I you. What is it? What does it tell me? What is it? He said, you know, the business I do was into credit card fraud. He said, we have money. We want to bring it to Nigeria. He said, we used to use some churches. Let me use your church. We just put in 20,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds of those monies so I can go through your church and then you then give us back. We'll give you 10%, 20%. Let's negotiate it. So if the money that you... I said, credit card fraud, yes. The money will come to our church account, yes. I will then take it back, give to you, yes. Ah, I said, my brother, <laughs> I said, I thought, I thought it was good business, I want to do business. I can't, I said, no, you're, you are not going to be rich. What's wrong with you? People are doing it, you are look at your economy, I mean business. I said, economy is better. <laughs> I will say economy. I left the place quickly, went to go and sit back. Let me go and see the economy. I went, and uh, my seat was cramped. How can I do that? Money laundering, he told me many years ago. He said, Churches are doing it, I should do it. That will make money. That the numbers are huge. How can you that, 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 that? Because church account is not looked at. How can you do that? God's name. Hey! Some people are trying to know. How can you sleep? How can you pray to God? How can you not come and say, The Lord says, The love of. I did not do it. I refuse to do it. Today, I don't want to go to the story of where he is now and where I am now. If I go there, you'll not like it. The man is out there now doing nothing. His other, my other cousin went to jail for the same credit card fraud. He came out of jail. The other one is now in Nigeria struggling somewhere. And he's struggling. He's been trying to reach me. I'm done dodging him. So I'm going to come and give him another offer. <laughs> I'm dodging him. Can you see? Please. Let me give you four kinds of marriages and money. How money defines marriages? Four kinds. Number one, project for me, please. Four kinds of marriage and money. The Nabal and Abigail marriage. Write it down. Nabal and Abigail. You find this in 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel 25. Pastor Pedro, this is a marriage where man worships money and the woman takes, worships God on the behalf, takes it to worship God on their behalf, takes the money. Nabal in that marriage, and as a marriage said that the men are worshippers of money and their wife are virtuous. In that marriage, the man was a worshipper of money. You know the story. 
David said, it was my people that was a defense to your wealth. We protected your assets. Can you please give us some small bread to eat? He said, no. He said, he will not. Who is this David? All these days, this master, these servants that jumped from their masters. That man was a worshiper of money. The wife was virtuous, darling. The wife said, ah, I can't do it. The wife carried the money and some food behind the husband. You'll be seeing what some women do in church. Carry the money on behalf of the home to go and meet a man of God, David, to say, sir, take what she took. The man did not even know. He had so much money. The little she took, they didn't even miss it. That marriage is existing in most couples, most homes, where the man does not see anything good in God. The gold becomes the God of the man. Nabal. Bible calls the man foolish. The wife saved the man's life for a moment. And David said, no problem. When she got home, she found out that the man was still drinking alcohol, still doing partying, still doing marrying. And, and, and she wondered, look at my husband. I won't tell him now. If I tell him now, he will be angry. Following day, when the man came down, the stupor was no more there. She now told the husband, do you know what happened yesterday? Do you know you're a fool? That man, if not for him, will not be here. Because David has 600 soldiers. They protect our entire flock and asset and our herds. Nobody could attack us. In fact, the Bible says they were a wall unto us. Wall. Impenetrable wall. And then the man now says, can I get something small? You say, no, you can't give him. I will not give him. I will not give him. You just say, thank you. Impenetrable wall. So he was angry. Immediately, listen, immediately he heard. The Bible says, bam, it became stone cold. What we call stroke today. He had a stroke on the spot. He couldn't move his body anymore. Ten days. On the tenth day, the Bible says, God struck him and he died. God killed him. See, he became a stone. His heart died within him. His heart died. Ten days. Then the Lord killed him. The Lord smote him that he died. And immediately David heard that. You know what David did? Smart man. Sharp man. He sent boys to go and meet that girl. How are you doing, babe? I understand your husband is dead. I'm interested in being your husband to continue to protect your assets. The woman said, Oh God, before you even say, Will you? I said, I do. <laughs> I big girl did not even think twice. Grab the handmaid. Let's go to a good man, I beg, and leave this foolish man that is dead. <laughs> David had to marry Abigail. He married Abigail immediately. Praise God. That's a matter that some men are godless and don't give to God and mankind. Project for me quickly. Let me show you the Nabal and Abigail marriage. Project for me Nabal and Abigail marriage. Some men are what? Godless and they don't give to God and to mankind. Do you notice that the man did not give to God, neither gave to mankind charity. Because to give to David is called what? Charity. To just give to people that need. He didn't give to mankind. He didn't give to David who helped him in making the money. He didn't give to God and his staff. His staff reported him to the wife. Spent the money on himself and pleasures only. He died without taking anything with him and had David inherited everything. That's a Nabal and Abigail marriage. The second marriage is Samson and Delilah marriage. That is found in Judges chapter 16. This is the marriage where the woman marries for money and fame, not for love. No, the first one is the man that is worshipping money. In this one, who's worshiping money? Who? The woman loved you, not because you are tall or loose, it's because you have money. Because Samson was paying the bills. And such marriage, the day somebody else brings more money, the woman will do what? We jump. You are history. If somebody else offers more, she will jump. Uh, go digger. Bless you. Go digger. And as simple as that. I've told you there are different kinds of marriages. There is trophy wife, there is trophy husband. I want to tell them I've caught him. He's the finest guy in the town. So I'm going to marry him. Hey, hey. you go marry him. Oh, yeah, continue. <laughs> Are you good, and continue, give me the script, the, the thing. I want to run it down quickly. Delilah only loves something for his wealth, fame, and money. The woman can be bought with a higher price. 
I'm telling you, sometimes the price is by the boss, by the office. The office is paying 10 times what you are giving. The woman will just say, who are you? The woman will be able to come home and say, okay, look, look, honey, honey, I can't play with my job. Why? They are paying me more than you. How much are you giving yourself? I work in oil and gas. They just promoted me. And I make five billion a month. My husband is saying, honey, why are you not home now? Where? So that, that payment can even be your work. Maybe a man, maybe some, but whatever you do because of money, and you can despise your husband. You can despise your head because of money. You can even sell him. Next. Now, Samson, faithfulness is money dependent. As long as Samson was paying the bills, she was faithful. Being broke tests the marriage and relationship. That's why you see some marriages go through trial when they're now broke. When the man can no longer pay the bills. Your enemies can steal your wife from you if you marry a Delilah. The Lord will help you. Number three, Ananias and Sapphira want marriage. <laughs> Unity in iniquity. Solidarity in iniquity. This one, husband and wife are believers but not givers. Husband and wife are what? But not their confession is without their money. Because you know the story in Acts chapter 5. They both agreed. Have you seen husband and wife agreeing to deceive God? What an agreement. They both sat down. They agreed. Let's go and lie to God. Let's lie to church. Let's lie. Tell them we don't make money. We won't pay our tithe. Won't let us agree in iniquity. What a horrible agreement. Both of them died. The Holy Ghost killed them both. It's your Bible. Read it. Acts chapter 5. Put it for me quickly. I want to round up. Put it. I want to rush this thing because I have little time left. Project for me. Ananas, give me the picture. I want to read the, the entire thing. Is it there? Okay. They agreed, to this, they agreed to deceive God and with and the servants of God. Their end was disastrous and unpleasant. They worshipped money and mammon at the expense of their faith. I don't know which marriage you are practicing here. Are you practicing Nabal and Abigail? Samson and Jezebel and Delilah? Ananias and Sapphira? Or the last one, Heab and Jezebel marriage? This is the last one. The marriage where the woman uses witchcraft to buy the husband's love and affection. The other one is different. Delilah is different from Jezebel. Jezebel uses witchcraft. Delilah didn't. That one is even I did. You pay, I love. You don't pay, they bring bigger money, no love. <laughs> but this one is using witchcraft. Do you know what witchcraft is? If you read Second, First Kings, the way Delilah died, Jezebel died, you understand it. The Bible says when Jehu came, listen, when Jehu came, the man sent by God to go and kill Jezebel. To come and kill and execute judgment. Listen, everybody. The Bible says Jezebel painted her face. That's why people that are bereft of biblical knowledge think when ladies wear makeup, they are Jezebel. It's not true. It's not true. That's not Jezebel's spirit. That is not Jezebel's spirit. Jezebel's spirit is to use, to change your face, to change your moods, to manipulate people. The word painting of face was done to look differently. So I can wear a moody look. I can wear a sad look. Husband comes back from work. The wife is sitting now. Honey, are you okay? It's okay. She just painted her face. And what's wrong with you? Don't worry, just go. Just go. There's nothing wrong with her. Just go. Just go. I wonder why you talk to me now. No, no, I know you not understand. Don't worry. The, the, the God will help me. I'm your husband. <laughs> she just painted her face to wear a different look. Before you came in, she was okay. Oh. If you have CCTV, you see your wife dancing. 